Welcome folks, Matsumus here with you today, thank you for joining me on this video. Just a quick heads up guys, if you do wish to get notified about any of my upcoming military or gaming videos, please feel free to hit the bell on the subscribe button, which is going to allow you to be notified of whenever I bring out any new videos so you can keep up to date with the channel, so please feel free to hit that bell. So today we are learning about a very interesting and intriguing little vehicle, it is known as the Weasel, um, and this is a vehicle that's always kind of intrigued me, even back in the day once I was in the British military, in the German training areas, these things were flying around like a bat out of hell, literally like little German Porsche cars flying around on the training areas. Very impressive bit of kit, and now I'm starting to do some research on it, I find it to be quite interesting to see how its future is becoming. So the Weasel 1, um, which is primarily what we'll talk about first, um, is an air portable armoured vehicle and was developed actually by Porsche at the end of the 1970s. It entered service with the German Airborne Units in 1982. Production of the Weasel 1 ended in 1993 and over 300 of these vehicles were built. The US Army has taken delivery of a small number of vehicles for its use in extensive robotic trials. The Weasel is used for a wide range of missions including armor reconnaissance, command and control, battlefield surveillance, resupply, recovery and, as it's most prominently known as, an anti-tank guided weapon carrier. Due to its light weight of less than 3 tons, which is just minuscule guys, the vehicle provides protection against small arms fire and certain artillery splinters and fragmentation only. The Weasel 1 however does lack a nuclear, biological and chemical protection system which in today's climate is very risky. There are two most common armament configurations of the Weasel 1 in service with the German army. There is the fire support vehicle armed with a 20mm cannon and the tow ATGM or anti-tank guided missile carrier with various armaments being able to be fitted and carried by the Weasel including machine guns, the anti-tank weapons and anti-aircraft missiles also. The Weasel 1 is powered by a Volkswagen with the correct emissions <laughs> 2.1 litre diesel engine developing 86 minuscule horsepower but for a tiny vehicle that only weighs 3 tons it really doesn't make much difference. The engine and transmission can be replaced in field conditions in about 15 minutes, which is unbelievable. A 15 minute engine or transmission swap for a vehicle like this is fantastic, and that is something that as a vehicle mechanic back in my day, I would have loved to have been able to happen with the CVRT um, or the Comet Vehicle Track Reconnaissance, or known as the Scimitar, or the variants of that kind of vehicle was a nightmare to work on and it was a very similar sort of setup as what we're looking at right now and it was just hell to have a you know a, a transmission engine driveline change out in 15 minutes is very impressive the vehicle does have very good cross-country performance due to its low weight track configuration and consequently low ground pressure which makes it perfect for muddy conditions being that this vehicle is a reconnaissance vehicle primarily, its ability to transfer across the train very very quickly and into the most disgusting muddy conditions makes it perfect to sneak away, sneak around and to try and find and locate the enemy and also potentially give it a good little punch with the old ATGM and small armaments that it has on board. With that being said though, a vehicle like this would never really work on its own. It would try and work within a platoon or a small fire team to be able to uh, relay information back to one another and to cover one another in bounding fire maneuvers which is very very handy to have because it's a lot like the infantry helping your buddy looking after one another while you try and move to a position or move out of a position. The vehicle can be fitted with a flotation kit to allow it to cross water obstacles. On water the vehicle is powered by its tracks however with this being said if it is crossing across very strong currents of water it could potentially be quite prone to being tipped over into the water so it's not really that particularly good at crossing water obstacles but it does have that ability. The Weasel 1 can be airlifted by aircraft and this is one of the key features of this vehicle. It can even be lifted by helicopters i.e. the CH-53 can transport two weasels and it can also be carried by helicopters as an underslung load. This is very very important and something that is very key to this vehicle's future. As we already know we always want to try and keep vehicles as mobile and as sort of adaptable as possible on the battlefield. With this vehicle it is so lightweight and so small that it is perfect to be dropped off uh, by aircraft and airborne units which is nice because airborne units nowadays are they're more relying on vehicles trying to support their efforts in, along with just you know boots on the ground and I know the US military are looking into developing this vehicle for themselves um, to try and get it back into the airborne role and to try and give airborne troops more support and reconnaissance of vehicles available because big old heavy Humvees and all that sort of stuff they're all well and good but this vehicle being tracked is able to get through terrain that's a lot more difficult and varied than what a Humvee on four wheels can do. So that was the Weasel 1 guys and now what I'm going to talk to you about is the Weasel 2 armoured weapons carrier from Germany as well. 
The Weasel 2 vehicle family was developed by Rheinmetall Defense for the German Army. It was derived from the Weasel 1 armored weapons carrier, and the first Weasel 2 light air transport armored vehicle was unveiled in June 1994. It is a multi-purpose vehicle which can be deployed in a variety of mission types such as reconnaissance, command and control, evaluation of wounded personnel, and weapon transportation. The Weasel 2 series includes an armored personnel carrier, a command post vehicle, a joint fire support team, a field ambulance, an air defense weapons carrier, a reconnaissance vehicle, and a 120mm mortar variant. The APC can carry four fully equipped troops, and it features two doors in the rear side of entry and exit for crew members. The command post vehicle is equipped with a roof-mounted hard radar system. The engineer and reconnaissance vehicle is fitted with a combat engineer specific equipment set, allowing it to perform demolition operations and scout for minefields. The Weasel 2 is a stretched and improved version of the Weasel 1. It incorporates an extended hull and more powerful engine, and can be easily distinguished from its predecessor by the additional road wheel it features on either side of its hull. The vehicles are fully digitized and steering, acceleration, brakes and shifting gears can be operated without the use of mechanical controls. The vehicle is able to take a heavy brunt roll to both sides of the vehicle at 100% speed variation. This means the vehicle and the crew are very much protected if the potential of being rolled happens. Newer variants of this vehicle are equipped with an MBC overpressure and air conditioning system which is a very very key feature to have on modern day battlefield vehicles now and if it's not there it's really redundant as a vehicle. The Weasel 2 is powered by an Audi instead of Volkswagen 1.9 litre 4 cylinder turbocharged diesel engine coupled to a ZF LSG 300 automatic transmission. The engine generates a power output of 81 kilowatts, however it's producing around 190 horsepower in its newer configuration. The electronic control system on board automatically tunes the engine and transmission output according to the vehicle's weight, and this is very key guys because if the vehicle can save fuel or even potentially save strain onto the transmission and driveline, that's really handy to have, so it kind of adjusts its power on the fly, which is really interesting to be honest. This vehicle demonstrates all-terrain capabilities and maneuverability, even in areas that are not generally accessible to larger, heavier vehicles, which as mentioned before is perfect for reconnaissance and airborne units. The lower silhouette and lower ground pressure provide a high stability on swampy and snow covered terrains. Once again, this vehicle is air transportable by helicopters and air droppable. Different variations of this vehicle have different fire control systems, however the vehicle is fitted with an integrated observation equipment including a high resolution daylight camera, a thermal imaging device and a forward observer unit. It can independently search targets and communicate with the command vehicle with ease. The crews of the company command vehicle, platoon vehicle and fire control vehicle jointly determine the action performed against the enemy. The Weasel 2 air defense weapon carrier or the Ozzelot is fitted with air defense missile launchers, two box launchers containing four ready to fire FIM-92 stingers or alternatively a currently unknown number of vertical launch cells with LFKNG missiles. Other armaments that this vehicle is normally fitted with are a roof mounted Krauss Maffei Wegman 7.62mm MG3 machine gun. As standard with most NATO vehicles, it also has smoke grenade launchers mounted on the front of the hull. So there you have it guys, the Weasel 1 and 2 armoured vehicles. I honestly think these are a very impressive little vehicle, considering that today's modern conflicts are potentially going to be going back to the open plane warfare of armour versus mechanised. I think an asset like this is very integral for the battlefield. Reconnaissance vehicles have kind of been left behind a little bit in the tracked status, and this vehicle seems to continue on its future, which is rather impressive. One thing I will say is these vehicles really do have some formidable armament on them considering they only weigh about 3 tons. Now we already know the CVRT series is obviously being decommissioned, being uh, taken away due to its uh, replacement of the Lynx fighting vehicle. However, it looks like the German military is continuing to roll with these vehicles and even trying to outsource them to other countries. The fact that it does have the capability of firing the tow missile, which we know is a formidable and very powerful anti-tank weapon system on the battlefield, this provides not only a reconnaissance element, but also a potential engagement element, which allows this vehicle to not only just look out for the enemy, but once it finds it, engages it and get out there very, very quickly. The 20mm cannon can really cause some pain towards some mechanized brigades, or even potentially uh, infantry that if they do come across, they can engage quite quickly and pull back out of there. Obviously, prolonged engagements this vehicle really isn't designed for, but it is able to give some formidable defense from itself. I think what really sets this vehicle aside in the positive light for me is its ability to be so light it can be dropped in just about anywhere with helicopters or airborne drops. I think, honestly, that that is a big part of the military that the 
countries are starting to focus back into being able to support their airborne units with reconnaissance vehicles and elements that can get on the battlefield very very quickly and traverse across any kind of terrain and provide that battlefield picture to the airborne elements if necessary. It also, as mentioned before with that armament, is able to provide some serious fire support if necessary to those airborne brigades. And with today's modern environments for the battlefield, I think mobile troops that can get things like this out on the ground very quickly is the way forward. Overall guys, I think this vehicle has a very prosperous future, whether or not it goes to other countries or not, or whether or not they're going to continue upgrading it, who knows. But it is still being used today and that's saying something. Whether or not you agree with the reconnaissance elements being small, lightweight, and very unarmored, that's your own opinion, and to be honest, I kind of side with it a little bit too. It's nice to have a vehicle that can protect itself a little bit more, and the armor on this vehicle is obviously going to be very thin considering how lightweight it is, but it is able to hold its own, and its primary focus is to hide, shoot, and scoot, and get out of there and locate that enemy. Overall, fantastic vehicle, and really, really cool, and I'm glad I finally know a little bit more about this vehicle, because when I saw it in Germany, I was just intrigued. It looked like a little Tonka car driving around. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I really do appreciate it. Please leave a like and a comment, and let me know what you think of the video. And if you are new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. Like I said before, check out that little bell button there if you want to see any more future military videos or gaming videos. And I hope you have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.